when you look at these numbers, when customers and clients come to you, sign you up and, and engage your services, how much, how much are you worried about the numbers that you talk to them about in the boardroom? Well, I, I suppose very often we're more concerned about, in, in the end, some of these numbers at the end, they translate to valuations. Precisely. Right. And um, well, when you talk about valuations in, in, the, in the listing manual, there are certain thresholds which you have to look at. Uh, because if you cross certain thresholds, you become a mining oil and gas company, and then a whole slew of other regulations will come into play. Why is it important for you to think about that? I suppose uh, these regulations, when they come into play, will cost you more because compliance will require you to produce uh, 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 independent qualified persons reports and so on and so forth. And call a shareholders meeting potentially uh, yeah, too. Well, potentially, and then uh, b because we'll be talking about somebody wanting to buy an interest in some mining company that has got a certain valuation and the, the, the valuation came about from uh, the uh, you know, uh, uh, fantastic figures that are coming up from, uh, from somewhere else, like what Mark has just said. So yes, I, I think sometimes when we come across these numbers, uh, we would be concerned over a number of things about where the thresholds are. Uh, and sometimes, if, if, if you look at the Singapore landscape, particularly on, on the stock exchange, there are not exactly that many uh, specialized mining companies. So at the end of the day, uh, you suddenly can become a mining company because you bought an interest in a mine. Uh, but you may not be a mining company for purposes of uh, 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 the listing manual, right? Uh, but comes back to the same point, I suppose, because mining is such a specialized industry, if you just buy even, see, something very small, maybe 15, 20% into a mining company, and, and you may not trigger a major acquisition, do you have the, uh, the, the, the requisite professional team within your organization to actually look out for shareholders when it comes to the acquisition itself. Well, they're probably looking to you for that expertise. Uh, well, exactly not, actually. We, we, we only deal with the, the, the issue of legal compliance. I think we, we're talking about people who understand the business. We're talking about the team that can run the mine, people who can actually look at the numbers coming up from the mine and tell you whether this is making sense or not. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if you, if you don't have to comply with the mining, uh, the, the, the MOG requirements of the listing manual, Potentially, you have much less uh, 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 valuation work to do. In, in other words, you actually have, may have less due diligence. To do. And, and that's you know, where, where it concerns shareholders most. So if you are invested in a company that's investing in a mine, 15%, 20%, mm -hmm. you have maybe less due diligence but also greater risk than if it's a company that comes in as an IPO or even an RTO where the core business of the company changes. Yes, uh, I, I think because the IPO and the RTO is a more deliberate exercise. Potentially, in most cases of an IPO and an RTO, you will present uh, to shareholders uh, that the full complement of the team you know, is going to be there because that's going to be the selling point, actually, more than just the asset itself. But if you're talking about an existing company that's buying into an interest, well, it's, it's, it's going to be a question of whether, in, in the first place, if no particular approval is, is required because it's just buying in, then the, the company may not have the necessary professional uh, expertise to actually manage the mine. And, and a few uh, seminars ago, we were talking about a New Zealand ladder maker that had bought a coal mine. Do you remember that story? And, and there, were, there was promises of a, of a coal deposit, uh, and they figured, we're a bit bored with ladders, we're going to go into coal mining. And in the end, it seems there was nothing in the ground at all. Do, Mark, jump on in here. Is there something um, of a concern to you when a mining, rather when a company comes to you, maybe they're a property developer or their, their core business is ladders or something else, where they then say to you, you know, we, we want your take on this. Do you raise that red flag that do you guys really know what you're doing? It, it depends what their motivation is. I think we have to separate two cases. One case is a company that will always have its core business, whatever that business might be, agriculture, finance, anything, which has just said, oh, we can make some money out of an investment and it, it doesn't really matter what the investment is, as long as it's always still in the minority side of things and it's never going to become core business, then it's just a company making a very small investment in, a, in something else that it sees some attractiveness in. That's a completely different issue compared to a company that is in the agriculture business that wants to, or the ladder making business, that wants to then 
stop making ladders and become a coal miner. That very much is a very different situation where that company must become knowledgeable in that industry before it makes the investment decisions and goes into it. And that's where it needs the due diligence. And primarily, that's where it needs the knowledge of what are the opportunities and the risks associated with that strategy. And, and the, ITO, the, uh, sorry, the RTO and the IPO process, what, that's really formalising that. They, they need to have done their due diligence a long time before embarking on an, I, uh, an IPO or an RTO. The Singapore exchange rules require certain vigilance and certain compliance but primarily, that's that's uh, an after, not not quite an afterthought, but it's part of the compliance requirements. And if a company's already made the decision to go from making ladders to mining coal, then they should have done a lot more due diligence prior to engaging someone to do an, I, an IQPR and an independent valuation report. Absolutely. But fair to say that if you're invested in a company which all of a sudden makes a disclosure to the exchange, we're going to invest in a zinc mine, you should ask some heavy duty questions, I'm guessing. Um, well, I think you, you, you definitely will be, will have to. I think w w one of the key considerations I, we, we usually would have as advisors is we would usually look at um, the capitalization of the company to start with, because sometimes we can talk about a minority stake, 10, 20%, looks small enough for many of us, but if at the end of the day, 10, 20% requires a consideration to be paid, which forms a, a very substantial part of the company's uh, uh, capital, or for that matter, cash, if you like. Uh, I, I think it, it, it triggers uh, some alarm bells, I think, to, to, to investors or shareholders as to whether the company should be going into such a large acquisition. Because it may not trigger necessarily the, 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 the percentage thresholds of, of, of a major acquisition requiring shareholders' approval, but it's just the amount of money they might have to spend uh, might be significant.